Welcome back to the Lantern Rouge YouTube channel. This is Tour de la Provence 2021 Stage 1 Highlights. Where have I been for the last couple of months? Well, making this possible for y'all. But back to this stage race, a nasty start to the season for some of these riders. They started with a climb called de l'Espoulière, and I feel like that climb has been in, is going to be in the Tour de France this year. It was last year because I've struggled to pronounce it before. 10.5 k's, 5.5% out the gate, a Cat 1 climb. And then it was pretty much rolling hills all day in the hills to the east of Marseille. Probably the most difficult climb was the Monte de Brula, 2.8 k's at 8.1% which came with about 70 kilometers to go but it was a flat run into the finish 10 k's of flat on the coastline exposed to the wind which would suit the sprinters Demar being the hot favorite for the day and what a crazy strong start list Tour de la Provence has world champ Alaphilippe here this used to just be a tune-up race that only Azure Desert Le Mondial and FDJ turned up to now they got Tour de France winner Egan Bernal a break did go over that first Cat 1 climb of the day with Lilian Colmichin and Delio Fernandez on Delco. The bunch weren't too fussed about it. FDJ were just keeping it at about 2.30, 2.40. Everyone was chatting, times were good. The Norwegians were catching up Alexander Kristoff there for UAE Team Emirates. There was a viaduct as they did the first lap around Sisfour La Plage. But then in the run into that climb I mentioned, Monte de Brula, uh, BNB started to work really hard and ate into that gap and eventually, I think it was less than a minute at the base of that climb, at which time Remy Cavagna on De Koenig Quickstep attacked out of that group. They had a lot of options for today's race, including Davide Ballerini, their sprinter, and he actually got no leash from BNB. They rode full trying to keep him in check. He caught the break really easily. You see Alaphilippe fourth wheel behind the train of BNB. They got four riders there, and Cockard, Brian Cockard must be climbing really well because BNB were happy to ride Max and he was fine. He climbed well at GP Le Marseillaise the other week as well. So his climbing seems to be much improved, Cockard. So Cavani was caught about halfway up the climb. Then a counter came from Van Seven on, on quick step and then another counter from Askren. But then over the top of the climb, after the KOM points, Ciccone attacked through the feed zone. And I'll go back and show you why this attack was so successful. You see these little banners in the background? That's where the KOM sprint finished. So I think a few riders sprinted for those points or the bonus seconds there, and then they eased off the gas. And you can see it's still going uphill. So the climb actually hadn't finished yet. They also have a feed zone that he's attacking through. That's why Ciccone's attack was really effective, got a good gap. And it was Gianni Moscon who bridged over to him initially, and then Julian Alaphilippe, the world champ, went across. And this was the start of great tactics from Quickstep today. I think Alaphilippe initially was going for the bonus seconds that then got annulled at the top of the categorized climb and he theoretically, everyone thought he was going to be going into the leader's jersey could he, because he had accumulated 11 seconds, but they got annulled. But still, a break this strong with Moscon, Chicona, who's coming off having, I think, COVID last year and he had no surgery, so he should be better this year. Won Trofeo Laguelia earlier last year, similar time. It put a lot of pressure on FDJ and you can see Arno Demar in the bunch here. I think he'd been dropped or distanced marginally over that climb. Nasser Buwani was there, but it definitely made the day a lot more difficult for all the other teams who had missed that break and we're now having to work hard for an extra hour rather than a cruisy run into the finish on the coastline. So 32 k's to go, 53 second gap, Bahrain started to help. I think they're worried about Alaphilippe leading too much on GC. 26 k's to go, 36 second gap, Arkea Samzik take over and they were eating into that gap. It looked like they were going to be caught and then it started to go out a little bit with 20 k's to go and FDJ hadn't been helping. But then FDJ did come to the front with about 18 k's to go. They hit the coastline which was expensive exposed to quite strong winds and that pretty much spelled the death knell for this extremely strong breakaway. Having the world champ attacking with like 67 k's to go. FDJ were burning riders at the front chasing. You see one pulling off there. UAE were working for Christoph, not Matteo Trentin today I think. Askren you see here, Quickstep still did a good job blocking with Askren and other riders messing up this chase. They still had Davide Ballerini waiting in reserve, their sprinter if Alaphilippe got caught. And eventually they did get caught. I thought they were going to get caught at like 6 or 7 k's to go, but they kept working so well together that it ended up being under 2 k's to go that they're caught. Moscon pats Alaphilippe on the back saying, we did a good job today. But Alaphilippe says, my, my day is not done yet. He joined the quick step lead out train. You can see him second wheel here. We're now in the last 1,500 meters and quick step have got almost a full complement of riders for Ballerini. Askren third wheel, Damar on the right hand side with just one other rider to help him. And Alaphilippe, he must already be on some fire form you can see he'd been in the break for a long time and he did a really strong lead out here with Askren on his wheel and we'll play the sprint through in full speed and then go back and analyze it as we normally do but yeah Demar third wheel Askren second wheel they've got 350 meters to go right now it's a headwind sprint 
And yeah, Demar just got left there a bit early. Also a bit weird what happened with Ida Sherling and Walls for Bora Hansgrohe. Demar kicked very, very early when I thought he could have waited on Askren's wheel. He gets, look at the gap, he immediately gets on Sherling and Ballerini who comes up the inside, gets the important draft off Demar who'd been hanging in the wind for too long and then pips him on the line and he is G'd up. <laughs> So a really strong win this early in the season for Davide Ballerini. He won one race last year, World Tour level, in the stage in the Tour de Polonia. He's a legit sprinter. And yes, this isn't a World Tour race, but Damar is here, top three sprinter. And the majority of the World Tour teams are here. I think in terms of having the best kick on the stage, it still clearly was Arno Damar. But why did he jump so early? And to answer that question, we need to go back and look at what Quickstep did to change this stage from a basic, straightforward sprint stage and use those hills to their advantage. First, they attacked on Monte de Brulard with Remy Cavagna. That put Damar under pressure, and I think he was dropping a little bit on the climb, as well as the other sprinters, apart from Cocard. They then kept rolling attacks with Van Sevenant and Askren, eventually having Alaphilippe join the move of Ciccone and Moscon. That group then working seamlessly together to actually open up a decent gap of 1 minute and 20, 1 minute and 25 seconds at its most. FDJ had then had to work hard to keep Damar in good position, so they'd already lost, I think, a rider or two by the time they got to the last five to seven kilometers. By 20 k's to go, the gap still hadn't come down that much, so they had to send riders forward to chase, meaning by this point with 10 k's to go, it was really UAE and Quickstep that had the numbers at the front of the peloton, and Askren was still doing a good job blocking. And in the last 1,500 meters, you can see that Demar only has one lead-out man on the right-hand side, whilst Quickstep on the left-hand side, with Alaphilippe kicking, have one, two, three riders still there leading out Davide Ballerini. And this is the key moment for me here. Demar's lead-out man drops him off on the wheel of Askren, but instead of being able to slot in himself and then pull Demar to 150 meters to go, he's out of gas and just has to leave Demar there. And that's why Demar felt like he had to jump too early. I think he could have waited on Askren another 25 meters, but he didn't have that perfect lead-out until the last 150, 125. And Ballerini, who waited his time, was able to pick him on the line. So the standings in the stage, Ballerini first, Damar second, Nasser Bouani third, Clement Venturini for Ajdoua Citroën fourth. The GC standings are a little bit different because of the bonus seconds that the breakaway mopped up, but still the top three are the same as the stage results, Ballerini going into the leader's jersey. Tomorrow's stage two is from Cassis to Manosk, and yeah, it doesn't look as hard as today's stage. The opening climb isn't as difficult, but still, it's a very rolly day, 175 k's. We've got a 2.7 k, 3.4% finish into Minosk uphill finish. And really it's another day that should suit Ballerini pretty well. And Demar too, based on his Giro performance and Wallonie performance. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe down below if you did. We'll have the next three stages highlights on the channel in the next three days. And Davide Ballerini, let your dreams be real. I for one believe that you will hang with Vlasov on Mont Ventoux in stage three. And now you're going to play for the GC. Me? Yeah. <laughs> that for me is not so easy. <laughs>